Moving on to the next section, we're going to discuss the quotient rule for derivatives in this video. And it's a rule that we haven't covered yet. And I'm just going to start the video off by stating what it is. So basically, if you have a function f of x, and it's in the format of where you have a function g of x over another function h of x, well, the derivative of that whole function is just going to equal the derivative of that function in the numerator times h of x, the function in the denominator, minus the function in the numerator times the derivative of the function in the denominator, h of prime x, and then that's going to be all over that function in the denominator, h of x squared. So let's do an example. Let's say I have this function f of x equals x squared over x plus 3 and I have to find its derivative. Now the way we've been solving these sort of functions in this format so far is we've been using the product rule. So what we've been doing is we've been taking any expression in the denominator, bringing it up to the numerator, and then using the power rule. So for example, this one, this x plus 3 is like to the power of 1. So we can rewrite this function as x squared, which is the function in the numerator. But if we bring this x plus 3 up to the numerator, it would be x plus 3 to the power of negative 1. And now, because this function is two functions multiplied by each other, when we find its derivative, we can apply the product rule. So then applying the product rule on this, we would take the derivative of that first function, x squared, which is 2x, times the derivative of the second function as is, plus the first function as it is in the, in the uh, original function, x squared, times the derivative of this second function here. And on the second function, we have to apply the power of a function rule, because notice how it's a function to the power of something. So we bring the negative one down, we keep that function inside the bracket the same, and then we subtract one from the exponent, so we'd have a negative two in the exponent now, and then we have to multiply it by the derivative of that inner function, and the derivative of x plus three is just one. So I multiplied it by one there. So now to simplify it, let's bring those x plus three uh, functions to the power of the negative exponents down to the denominators. So uh, this part here, we can rewrite as two x over x plus three. We just brought that x plus three to the power of negative one down to the denominator. And then here, this whole expression, we can rewrite as minus x squared, because this negative and positive turn into a negative. The x squared stays in the numerator, and then this x plus three to the power of negative two, we bring down to the denominator, and it becomes x plus three to the power of positive two. And now we don't want to leave it like this. Let's try to combine it into one fraction. So notice to get a common denominator, we have to multiply this expression by x plus 3 to get it into x plus 3 squared. So then we can subtract the fractions. Well, what we do to the bottom, we also have to do to the top. And now we can combine these fractions into one. So then when we simplify that, if we distribute that two x inside the bracket, we'd have two x squared plus six x minus x squared. And then that numerator would simplify into x squared plus six x. And it's still all over that common denominator of x plus three squared. So that here represents the derivative of this function. And the way we solved it was using the product rule. Now let's find the derivative of this function using the quotient rule. And let's see if this formula will hold and we get the same derivative with the way that we've been dealing with so far. And then let's see the differences in the ways, which one is maybe easier to work with. Now notice this function here, for the quotient rule, we don't have to rearrange it like we did for the product rule because it's already in this format. This x squared here in the numerator represents this g of x, and then this x plus three here in the denominator represents this h of x. So when we find the derivative, we can go straight into this formula, this expression right there. So let's do that. Let's get straight into finding the derivative. So the first part here, g prime x, is the derivative of the numerator, which is just 2x, times the function in the denominator left as is, so that's just x plus 3, minus the function in the numerator, x squared, times the derivative of the function in the denominator. And the derivative of x plus 3 is just simply 1. 
and then this is still all over the function in the denominator squared. So we would just take this x plus 3 and square it. And now notice how we've gotten to this step here much quicker just using this formula. So if we expand this 2x uh, into the bracket, we would have 2x squared plus 6x, and then this would just be minus x squared. This is all over x plus 3 squared. And then uh, simplifying the uh, numerator, 2x squared minus x squared, that would just give us x squared. And we're still adding the 6x, and then this is x plus 3 squared in the denominator. So that represents the derivative. And notice how it's the exact same answer here, but with a lot less headache and a lot less work. Number one, we didn't have to rearrange the formula like we did here, like we didn't have to bring this x plus 3 up to the numerator, we can just leave it like it is. And then we didn't have to do this algebra here, doing this product rule, then bringing this x plus 3 down to the denominator, and then getting a common denominator, adding it. We got that common denominator right away, and all we had to do was simplify the numerator. So whenever you get a function in this format, don't use the product rule with it anymore, just use the quotient rule. It'll be a lot more simple for you. And we've proved that this formula works here because we got the exact same derivative. Now, one more thing I wanna mention before uh, finishing this video is you could have also simplified the numerator, you could have factored it. So the numerator could have been x over x plus six, and this would be x plus three squared still. And usually you wanna do that because sometimes when you factor the numerator that you have in the derivative, sometimes terms will cancel out with the denominator. So if this bracket was like x plus 3, we could cancel out at x plus 3 in the numerator and 1x plus 3 in the denominator, and it would simplify even more. In this case, it doesn't happen, but the point is, is you always want to factor that numerator to see if that can potentially happen. So just keep that in mind. But yeah, main point of this video, whenever you get functions in this format now, a function over another function, you have to find the derivative, always use the quotient rule. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.